Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the On The Whistle on the Always Arsenal show. I actually could do the whole show myself. I just want to speak, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let our returning guest, my partner in crime on the post-game shows, Mr. Albert JTV is in the house. Man does. Good to see you, man. Long time. (laughs) I'm so excited. And I have the worst voice ever, Albert, and I've not stopped singing the Saliva song. It's amazing. Um, welcome to the show. Um, as everybody knows, Melvin will be here soon, I hope. Um, welcome. I, I, do you know what? I, Albert, you need to calm me. You yeah, need right, to calm right, cool. me. I need to do a proper welcome. Welcome to everybody in the chat room. Welcome to everybody that's singing the Saliva song in the chat room. Um, please subscribe, please press like, let me do all the things that I need to do now. And then we go, do, 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 do. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So for anyone that doesn't know, that's nine in nine points. That's three games won. That's us top of the league. Um, Albert, I, I, you know, I, <laughs> I actually don't know where to start. So the team comes out um, an hour before. He hasn't changed it. What were your thoughts? Good. Um, I think when he first kind of came to the club, um, we would we didn't seem to really know what team we'd apply each week. But I think the time he's been here, Amanda, is getting a nucleus of the same team. So I was happy to see the same team as before. Um, what's that? Three, four games in a row, if you include the um, pre-season friendly. But yeah, happy. Um, the players decided to keep their place in the team. Um, and you know what? One thing I've wanted to see is Arsenal start games well, and I, I can't complain from what I've seen in sort of the opening first three games. Um, sets the tone, Amanda. Sets the tone for the game. You score early, you go ahead, you get another one. You, 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 it puts you on the ascendancy. It puts you on the front foot, and Arsenal have been doing that really, really well. So, yeah, I was happy with the team lineup, and they they kind of they came good in that first half. I don't... I don't do player ratings, it bores me, but we're going to go through each player, okay, because I think trying to pick a man of the match, I sort of disagreed with um, Alan Smith, but it was very hard because for me it was very hard. He was Odegaard, look at me, poet, didn't even know it. But And then I sat there and I went, but Jesus has just been magnificent. And then you go Saliba. Mm. And then you think Xhaka. I want to talk about Jack in a moment. Um, <laughs> let's let's just go all the way back, uh, Albert. We have to talk about that first goal. Mm. I want to yeah. know from you what you thought. Um, so I'll, I'll try. I'll try and take it slowly as I can, Amanda, because it's so beautiful to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey Zeus, man. Like, I I, I get why people were excited. And I, and I can kind of get it, Amanda, why Smudger gave it to him. Um, people might think Strikers Union, but listen, yeah. I'm not going to argue with the the, the the Smithy, man. No way, man. Not me. But um, yeah, great work by um, by Jesus. And it, it, there was kind of sort of three kind of aspects to him. He, he, he won the ball, showed aggression, um, got on the front foot, then played the fantastic sort of kind of reverse pass to um, Martinelli, I think it was. Who had the shot, and then Erdogan's knocked it in. But yeah, he just um, kind of started with Mar- kind of started with Jesus, really. Just great work all around. You know, like I said, won the ball, aggressive, assist. Then you know, um, we get the goal through Erdogan, and, and I'm glad Erdogan scored, um, Amanda, because like Arsenal fans just get kind of not even touchy fingers. It just, it just yeah, I'll, there's, I an want excuse, to... there's always go on, yeah. sorry, Amanda, go on. No, no, I just want to. Hold off on Odegaard a second and actually want to bring in Uncle Melvin. Here he is. Better late than ever. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Mr. Melvin. How are you? Very happy. Nice and relaxed. That was quite relaxing, that wasn't it? Lovely. We've just, we've just, um, 
we, we've just dissected. Well, I would say Albert has been a little bit underwhelming, Albert, with that first goal. Jesus was absolutely magnificent. I don't know if it's me, Alb, but I thought he was, that piece of skill was phenomenal. No, he said, it, he said, yeah, it was all right. I was like, no, it's amazing. No, no, no. I said there was like, there was kind of different aspects to what he'd done. He, 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 he was aggressive. He won the ball back. Um, he got on the half turn and he laid it off. He was fantastic. Yeah, of course. That's what I said. <laughs> no, no, no. But you didn't say it. Go I was on. Yeah. Yeah, I was, go on, Melvin. Sorry. I just think his strength, his upper body strength for that goal was amazing. You can be aggressive and not have the strength. He was aggressive and he had the strength. Mm, yeah. He should never have got near that ball, really. And he did. Phenomenal, phenomenal performance for him. I mean, I think we paid too much. I, I, you know, it's interesting, and and I say this on every podcast that go on, and everyone knows this, and I know you're all bored saying it and listening to it, but sure. I do have a lot of city mates, and they're all different. They're not all, you know, one group. I can't tell you what they said to me when Jesus was mu- muted, even becoming to us. How what a wonderful player he is. Um, and yes, and I had to thank all my city mates this afternoon and just said, thank you. We're never going to go to another club. As Gunnar Bloggers said, we're never going to go to another club and buy any more players. We're only going to City. Because Zinchenko as well. So I think what we should do, um, we'll talk about the goals, the game, and then we're going to talk about the players because I'm all over the place because I'm so excited. And I- I'll tell you why I'm so excited. We've waited a long time for this, for a team, a strengthening squad, tactical, knowledge, know-how. Yes, I know Bournemouth weren't really at the races. You can only play what's in front of you. Um, but but Melvin, sum up the first goal for you and then we'll go on to the second one. First goal is, which is all about movement. We've got such fantastic movement on our side now from everywhere. I mean, you know, give, give it a year or so ago, it was just like play pretty football at the back for half an hour and then go down the side and cross it and there's no one there. This is so different. Everyone's moving in different directions. They're all linking up. It's very difficult, very difficult now, to mark us out of a game. You know, we will have games where we find it very, very difficult to score. But with that movement and that and that little one-twos we're doing the whole time, um, it doesn't matter. You know, we, I remember we played bright a couple of times and all we're doing is hitting these long centres in. They're just eating it up. Thank you very much. They can't do that now. We don't do that. We play it on the deck, we move it around, we come on the outside, we come inside. It's great. And they're on the defense, the defense, it was so easy to defend against Arsenal the last year. It's all changed. It's fantastic. It has, hasn't it, Albert? It has all changed. And, you know, Albert, for anyone that's just joined the show and not been on before, has been on many of my post game shows last year. And. <laughs> It's it's fair to say that you weren't a big Arteta fan. You, you never wanted him out or anything, but you weren't you weren't convinced as much as I was. Are you now becoming more convinced? First of all, have you watched all of nothing, all of it? I've watched everything. I've diluted everything. I've put things on paper. I've rewatched it. But yeah, with the, with, with the Arteta thing, I, with me, Amanda, I was kind of um, I wasn't overly overly praised of him, praising of him. I wasn't sort of, you know, on the other side, really negative and damning of him. Like, I just, in between the middle, I, I call it as I see it. I, you know, my own set of eyes don't lie to me as a fan watching Arsenal and maybe how he's implementing his tactics and man management. But, um, listen, um, I think the All or Nothing documentary sort of touched on a tiny, tiny bit um, from your question. Um, I thought, is it going to go either two ways of Arsenal fans, really? Um, for the ones that are quite keen on him they would kind of it would kind of they, they'd enjoy it the ones that either are not being great fans of him um it could go either ways Amanda I, I, I'm you know I'm not one or the other like you know he's our manager I'm going to support him he's here he's not going anywhere but do you not soon. after pre-season after who we've bought after watching the first three games after watching all or nothing do you not feel that certain fans and I'm not including you were no, quite unfair me. on him last season, or not? Um, yeah, but I think the problem with some of the, I think the problem with some of the Arsenal fans, like always, you always use the keyword sections, Amanda. Is yeah, is it footballing reasons why you have an issue with him, or is it you just being personal? 
because those are two different things. And I saw a or lot of... do you want likes for your podcast and followers and things like that? It's it's your it's whatever narrative yeah. you want to go down, isn't it? And you've seen mm. you've seen it with yourself. That it's sometimes you think, is it really about football? Is it really about wanting the best for Arsenal? I I can't, I can not like someone, Amanda, but there's a way of how you vocalize that. And for me, it, yeah. goes, over, it goes over the top of him. I, I, I will definitely say that. And anybody can come at me. Yeah. Right. There's a little bit of noise, and I think it's Uncle Melvin. What are you fiddling with? Stop. Microphone. It wasn't the microphone. I'm all right now. Stop fiddling. That's it. Melvin, so same question to you. Over last season, watching all or nothing, watching pre-season, seeing who we've brought in, watching the first three games, seeing how it's all changed. Do you feel... Um, I mean, you were quite pro Arteta, weren't you, last year? But I was also critical of him on certain decisions he was making. I think that's that fair enough, of course. I, yeah. I, I have certain things he did, I was hitting my head against the wall, going, why have you done that? Come on, it made no rhyme or reason to me. And it, and it wasn't like after the game I did it, during the game I'm sitting there thinking, you've got to do something now, you've got to be a bit more proactive. Or I just couldn't understand what he was doing. And, and um, going back to um, All or Nothing, it brought back bad memories. And, and I've got, I don't want to put a damper on anything, but I will, I will say this. And it's a big thing for this club now. We've made great strides, but, but, there was games last season. There's the um, Newcastle away, obviously. Tottenham, I thought we were slightly, slightly unlucky. But when we were 2 0 down, it was all over. We just fell apart. There's other games with Brighton at home, perhaps to a degree. There was definitely Crystal Palace away. And there might be another half a dozen games where we didn't get beat. The teams slaughtered us. It wasn't anything to do with the ability. There was just something in the club which we just gave up. We couldn't get from second gear to third. And if, if Arteta can get rid of that, I mean, we haven't been really tested on that basis yet. If we can get, you know, play somewhere on a dark, cold night, they're going to pound us with a crowd going, man. If we can actually play football and get a point or two away from home against teams like that, then I think, yeah, we've got a real chance here. But but did you not? Sorry to interrupt, Melvin. Did you not notice last week though, when Saliba scored the own goal, none of their heads went down, which would have done last season and the season before and the season before. And you know what I'm going to say. I actually felt that this is like a team of many, many years ago where they fight. You know, okay, Saliba's done that. The whole crowd clapped. Saliba. Yeah, well, yeah. sorry, not the whole crowd, but generally the, the stadium yeah. did clap no, Saliba. Was, was no, nothing. It was nothing like that. No, nothing, no, no, because, no. because we are completely, and I'm going to, this is a little pun for me, completely united. And before I go on, I would really like to welcome Barnaby Jones to the show. He is the only United fan in the chat. So welcome, Barnaby. I'm assuming you follow me, follow the show because of Mark... Goldbridge. Well, Mark's coming on in two weeks, and by then, United could have been uh, relegated. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Mark probably won't come on now, but um, we play United in a couple of weeks. But welcome. Thanks for coming on. It must be really tough for you at the moment, especially to see Arsenal fans happy. Um, okay, so I don't want any doom and gloom. I can't have doom and gloom, Melvin. It's just incredible at the moment. I feel very excited. I really do. And it, you know, I'm not sitting here going, we're going to win the treble or anything like that. That's not, you know, what I'm thinking. But I'm just thinking, we've got a team here that can challenge and, and, and a wonderful, wonderful bench as well to see to see the subs come on. Anyway, let's talk second goal. OK, so so within five minutes, we're one nil up from the most beautiful football that we've seen in a very long time. OK, controlling it slightly. 11 minutes later, talk, talk us through the goal, Melvin. Well, Ben White does over up on the right, and for once he hits it across first time. And there's a bit of a ricochet or something, and it comes, it comes back. Looks like um, Jesus is going to get it, but Odegaard, in his stride, takes it off his foot and just whacks it in the far corner. It was a beautiful shot. You could like it slow motion, actually. I don't know if it's a hard shot, but it looked like slow motion. All sitting there and yes, I mean you cheered, you must have all cheered before it went in the net. It was so beautiful. And it was just it was great to watch. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We didn't get any balls, we never touched the, 
the ball very often in the opponent's half line, in the opponent's penalty area last year. Those type of balls never happen. There's always these long, high balls. This is so good to watch. And Oligar, if Oligar can get two goals, then what's that saying about the team? Interchange is beautiful. Love it. It is. Albert, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I, I sort of touched on it. I know you didn't want to sort of bring come on to Odegaard at the time, but um, I, I was pleased for him because, as you would have seen, and Melvin, you would have seen it, um, I think with certain players in, in our team, I said I say notably probably Ben White and Odegaard, it really, it changes from game to game, literally with some sections of the fans. I, sometimes I can't keep up with it. I'm like, well, what, what, what do you want these guys to do? They're human beings, you know? But yeah, I was pleased for him, Amanda, man, because he's taken a lot of, not a lot of stick, but he just a lot of negative kind of vibe towards him. Um, you know, for the chance he probably should have shot yeah. against Crystal Palace. But you know, you want to see him in those areas getting goals because what I want to see from him or Erdogan, we know he's got the technical ability to pop passes off here and give him goes and one twos, but get into the box more. Take a shot. If you're gonna take a, a, a paste in from your teammate, so be it. Be a little bit more selfish in that area and the goals will come. It will come. You got two to say the second goal was for fa- the second goal was fantastic. Um, I kind of was a bit, you know, the offside and of and the, I actually thought yeah, it was I, I thought, thought it was, it was. Offside. Mm, but the angle, yeah. But um, yeah, like Melvin said, a good cross from Ben White, a bit of a, a bit of a ricochet in the box, but yeah, beautiful finish. Um, and yeah, we just we we dominated them, Amanda. Like I said, we start in games better. You saw the stat that came up after I think twenty minutes. You know, sh- um, shots on target, shots in the goal. Like Melvin talked about opposition, like touches in the opposition box. That's not familiar with me watching Arsenal in recent seasons, particularly in the final third. Um, but yeah. the energy and the, the this interchange is, is is brilliant to see. And that's why I'm excited, Albert. And I apparently, know, I know, Amanda, I know. Martin has put a stat up that says last time Erdegaard scored twice, he was 15 years debut debut in a Norwegian top league. Wow. I mean, I put these stats up. I don't know if they're true. <laughs> I have to say that. But, um, well, you know, it, it was weird. So, last week on the way... Thank you for that, Martin. And thanks to everybody in, in the chat. I'll put as many comments up as I can. Um, coming home last week from the game, um, I, 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 if I was driving, Talk Sport wouldn't be on, but I wasn't driving. And I have to listen to Talk Sport. And you get callers on. And it's so interesting, the... the the chat about Erdogan and we were saying I, I just sit there and I I sometimes I despair and then then when I'm at the Emirates and I'm walking around and I'm sitting in my seat and I'm talking to people I really realize that most of these people are not on social media they're really not and they just appreciate the game and and appreciate the players that we've got this thing with Erdogan it is a little bit like an agenda thing isn't it like if you sit there and go I want Arteta out. I don't rate Ar- Odegaard. It's like you have to stand by it. Now, many years ago, I didn't want Xhaka at the club. I hold my hands. I held my hands up on a podcast last week and said, "Wow, well, I, I have to h- hold my hands, hold my hands up and say I was wrong, absolutely wrong. No agenda from me at all." When he threw his jersey on the pitch at the Emirates, for me, the disrespect. I wanted him gone. He wasn't very good, passed backwards every five seconds and caused a lot of issue with the red cards and stuff. Now he seems to be actually playing in a position that suits him, in a team that suits him. He is absolutely flourishing. I mean, Melvin, do you agree on Xhaka or not? He's definitely improved, but I know it's only early season. I thought today was his worst game by far. Really? He He gave the ball away just outside our box once. It could have led to a goal. Very lucky he didn't lead to a goal. And they had nothing on us, Bournemouth. We had to give them a goal for them to score. And also, we could have put, who could have put through? Was it Jesus? A five yard ball to give to Zeus. Having said that, he's, he's, he's laid back the Saliba's goal was wonderful. Oh, yeah. we're going to talk about that in a moment. Absolutely. Yeah, I, thought he had his, I thought he gave the ball away a few times. He stumbled a couple of times. But his standard has been a lot better. I'll give you that. Albert, Xhaka? Yeah, it's an interesting one with him. Um, I, I didn't. This, this is obviously something they must have spoken about um, in terms of where his positioning is in the pitch, and, and particularly mm. when we're in possession, because 
I mean, I don't know why it's taking this long to realise that maybe <laughs> defensively he might not be the best in terms of uh, cover or, or but just playing a bit further forward. Where obviously when Thomas Part is there, and I think the, the I think I man, I think the, the fact that Zinchenko is here and he, you know, he plays in that sort of inside left position and goes further up the pitch, and then that allows um, Gabriel to move a bit more forward. Um, you've got a bit more solidity there, so. I mean, I didn't see it coming in terms of the position he, he the position he takes up in the. I mean, yeah, there's chances there. If he'd have got the ball, he probably could have scored himself. Um, but yeah, I, I thought last week he was very, very good. Um, he, I thought he was okay today. I, 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 if I, if it's to say to me, out, but give him a rating at ten, I'd say like I'll give him a, I'll give him a solid seven. Well, we're gonna we're not doing ratings, but, no, but you I'm can, you can yeah. do it. I don't mind. But you know, it's really interesting. So James Johnston, who is a friend of the show and a friend of all of us, correct Melvin. He played a hospital ball, hospital pass to Tommy Asu at the end, but he was fantastic against State. And his face at the end, hearing the fans sing his name was lovely. And I tweeted about that. I don't think I've ever sung a Granite Jacker song. I don't think I've ever heard one. I, I may be wrong there, um, and I'm sure someone will put me right, but. I tweeted about how that must make him feel, you know, and and, and I tell you something interesting on the all or nothing. Melvin, have you seen them all as well? Yeah, yeah. On the all or nothing, both of you, when Xhaka was, they were taking the Mickey out of him, weren't they, for the hospital, for not the hospital, for him getting sent off at Liverpool. Mm. But he pointed to all of them and he said, "I shouldn't have been on my own. I shouldn't have been the last man back." And he walked out. I've never really thought of it like that actually. And he was right. He shouldn't have been. And he was put in that position. And it is Jacker, And he made the wrong decision, obviously. But I, I sort of agree with that. So, right, let's just talk about, right, so we've done the second goal, which was just beautiful. Now we come on to the third goal. And I am going to talk about the fourth goal, because it was like offside by a toenail. And it was just beautiful. Um, Saliba scores an own goal last week, is an absolute unit, is is and, and you know, it's the old joke in it, like a new sign-in. Well, we've never seen him. Uh, and, and now he must be one of the first names on a team sheet. What an outstanding player he is. Did Arteta get this right, loaning him out for, was it three seasons? He was a young boy. Um, obviously, as everybody knows, he lost his uh, mother. Um, he needed to go back to France, perhaps to be near family. Who knows? Maybe it was all for, you know, the good of him as well. But the good of us now, we are reaping those rewards, aren't we, Melvin? Oh, definitely. I mean, I don't know whether it was a compassionate grounds. Hopefully it was from Arsenal. And also, they probably thought, you're not ready. You yeah. might have paid quite a bit of money. But I don't care if they were lucky or not, or they meant it. I don't care what they've done has worked out. Bundles, absolutely worked out. He's a bit of a strange player. Because for someone so tall, he's very, very fast. I remember once today, the guy was, the guy, the ball got put through, he got to him, he turned away from the guy and ran towards his own goal from a halfway line. The guy was nowhere to be seen. His long legs seemed to be about 20 foot across. Amazing. Very calm on the ball. He's always got options. He knows where everybody is. And he just, he just calms us down a bit. And he's very strong. I mean, listen, I've only seen him play a few times. And I saw him on YouTube when we first signed in. And I saw a few things last couple of seasons when he was in France for YouTube and he looked good but now he's being tested and he's he's done very very well and if if he's going to continue on this he only needs a slight slope upwards because he's nearly there anyway we've got a player in our hands it's fantastic oh. and I just wonder wonder that if Tomo gets fit where do we play Ben White? Well, we've got we're we're in the Europa League now, aren't we? We've got we're going to have games coming thick and thin with the League Cup, the FA Cup. Then we've got the World Cup that's going to disrupt all this. I, I have no idea how it's all going to play out, but we're going to get injuries, Melvin. We're going to need Ben White. We're going to need Tommy Asu, Tierney, Sinchenko, all of them to stay fit. It only takes one injury, and then you know, as they say, Albert, talk to me about Saliba. Uh, first, yeah, good problems to have, isn't it? Having a, yeah. having a, having squad definitely. <laughs> so it's sort always of used to come January. But um, yeah, with Saliba, I'm kind of just going to repeat what I've kind of said about him before. Um, I, I watched some of him play the games last season for Marseille. I was impressed. Um, I'd say he's one of them kind of he's one of them centre backs that very rarely go to ground. There's not many like it. Um, very good at reading the game. So I was impressed with what I saw when he's at Marseille. Um, 
obviously comes back to it comes back to Arsenal. Um, went to the pre went saw some of the games in pre season. Sorry, Amanda. Um, again, imp impressed um, distribution wise uh, and you know being in the posi right position at the right times. Very very good. Um, obviously very comfortable in the ball, bringing it out and going forward and passing. And I saw him obviously in the flesh for the first time against Sevilla. Very impressed again. And listen, he, listen, it's not it's not because of his his age, Amanda. Defenders make mistakes. Let's get over it. it happens. Um, it's unfortunate last week, but um, came back this week again. Was very good today. Fantastic goal. I mean, wow. I mean, when it went in, I actually thought it was Gabriel that actually took the shot and scored. Mm. And there's a replay player saw Saliba. So buzzing for him to go from one extreme where you concede the goal, but you know, you get your head up, the fans get behind you. The following week, clean sheet. Um, I actually said, you know, I think Arsenal might get more clean sheets this season than last mm. season. You can hold me to that, Amanda. But um, yeah, fantastic again, and like the song, the singing the song for Saliba, and again another steady performance and clean sheets breed confidence. And as I said at the outset, you know it's going to be a lot of games, man. You said it, you know Europa League, World Cup year going, you know. Um, so listen, a good problem to have with squad depth, squad depth, shall I say? So can't complain. I mean. You know, as I said, we'll go through the players in a moment. I'm going to put some comments up. I would like to say hello, Jed from Minnesota. And hello to everyone new and everyone that's not new that supported me since January doing these shows because it's not easy. It's one, It's very easy when we win. <laughs> mm. I've done post-game shows when we've lost and it's not easy. And this time last year, we lost three games. This time yes. now, we've won three games. So... This is a very happy show, and I will. I'm going to bring a comment up in a moment, but I just want to talk about um, the. I mean, Saliba. Yes, we're never going to know whether he came back last season and would have helped us, or it would not have been the right time. We don't know, but he's here now, and wow, just wow. Um, the fourth goal that was not given. We do need to talk about it. I, I'm not disputing he was offside. He was offside. You know. It is what it is. Um, Jesus. I, 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 I could wax lyrical about him all night. I really could. I just... What he only brings to us with his experience, his tenacity, his, his skill, his wealth of knowledge from playing with, with City. And, and, you know, I was just saying to my other half, actually... I've heard of Jesus. I heard of Jesus. I watched City a lot, you know, yeah. but it was all Aguero and everybody else, wasn't it? He played in an, an amazing team with amazing players at every position. For me, I always thought he was pretty average and okay. I, I wouldn't, I would never have thought, oh, yeah, wow, what a player. Now I think, <laughs> wow, what a player. And my city mates can't be wrong. They travel the world with City. They know their own players like we do. They rave about him. So Melvin first and Albert second, and then we'll go. We'll start talking about um, from Ramsdale onwards. For you, what do you think Jesus brings for the team for us? He brings fluid. Uh, he's very fluid. He brings other people into the game. He's direct. He's strong. He's got a football brain and he can finish. Apart from that, he doesn't bring too much. He's, you know, <laughs> you look all, how have we, how do we get so high in the league like the last couple of years with, without a centre forward? That's what I want to know. Had we not that we would have had him two years ago because they would never let him go probably two years ago in, when uh, Aguero was leaving. But I imagine having a player like that in our squad for the last two years. We would have 100% been in Europe and so many other things we might have done. So it's, uh, he's such a what big grade up to it. He made such a big difference to us. And uh, he needs, he needs, sometimes certain players lift clubs, and he's definitely done it with us. Albert? Oh, I'd love to talk about this guy, man. It's mad. Like, when the links were with Jesus, I, I was actually baffled by some of the Arsenal fans that were turning their nose up at him. I thought it was a no brainer. Absolutely, like the guy can finish, man. I think people have this thing, Amanda. Like, if you don't, if you're not a first teamer in your team, mm -hmm. oh, he can't be, he can't be good enough. You know, why, why can't he break? Like, are you crazy? That Man, man City team, but it, it, and he's a good player. Look, like you say, you've got Man City mates, and I. There's one guy I who I talked to. Like, he said, Pep, we used to pick him in the big games. This guy's press is phenomenal. 
So I was happy that we got linked with him, but I think what he brings is a combination of sort of Uber and Lacazette, the work rate, but he can finish. Um, he connects the plate. Mm. He's, and, and the difference of him, what we've got now, and what you saw at City, he wasn't the main man at City. As good as he was there, he was not the main man. No. He's come to Arsenal and he's the main man. He's the number nine. He's the go-to man. Um, so he's bought experience, even though he's still quite young. And he, I think he's a prime example for a finish at Amanda of People go, oh, you know, it doesn't have to be. He's a prime example for me that when you get players, when you buy players in the league that know the league and have been here a long time, they are going to bring something to the team. And he's and he's hundred percent proves that. He, I've, I've, I wasn't say I was overly confident. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to hit the ground running. But I was more confident because he's been in this league. He's played in this league. He knows what it's like. The the speed and the you know the the temperament side of it and the mentality. And he's a winner. End the story. So yeah. Listen, and I, he's, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry, darling. And he's won things that and that makes such a difference. He knows what it's like to fight to win for championships. I mean, seriously. We are so lucky, and and I'm just going to put Karen's message up. She's Amanda. What you tweeted out and included your Man City mates about Jesus was spot on. To think we only paid forty five million quid. Thank you, Karen. It's true. Half my City mates are not on Twitter. One of them actually messaged me and said, "You are looking awesome. Look, look what we've given you with Zinchenko and 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 Jesus." Um, right. Let, let's just let's just. Go a quick chat over from Ramsdale. Um, both of you, Ramsdale. Uh, I mean, obviously uh, there was the the uh, heading, the save from the header. It was spinning. It looked wide. Then you don't know if it's going wide, but it was a great save, wasn't it? Go on, Melf. Go on, Melf. Go on, Melf. Uh, Amanda, if he lets it in, it's a bad goal. Let him. Sorry about a great save. You shouldn't let those. You shouldn't let a head like that go in. I'm sorry, spinning or not spinning. No, if you No, right but team, I'm yeah. no sorry. Well, Melvin. Well. That's sorry, Melvin. Melvin, what I meant by that is people were saying he didn't need to go for the save. But well, I you got said sure. you got me yeah. sure. You uh, couldn't tell where it's going in or not. I don't blame you for that. No. At the end, I think he might even hit an, an arsenal player. That's what I said. So it's gonna be a corner anyway. So he's given nothing away. So he's gotta go for it. Yeah. And yeah. if you're asking me about his total performance. I think he needs a rocket up somewhere. I think he's a bit laxadated. That one where he kicked the ball out and it went to one of the um, yeah. former players who's complaining. You look at it again, got nothing to complain about. No, I agree. Yeah. And about five minutes after that, the cross came and he flapped it. Again, nothing to complain about. He wasn't under pressure. Should have done better. I think, I don't know what it is, second se season or the end of last season, he wasn't really firing all cylinders. I blame him for... Right, well, leave the own goal apart from I'm not sure. That was a bit of a misunderstanding. Those things happen. But I think the second goal against Leicester, I've got a question mark against. It went through him. It didn't go across him or at the top corner. It went through him. And it's, I know it's difficult when it's near the goalkeeper's legs. So they can't get down as quick. But they, they, they can take action. And I think that really, and sometimes, some of his balls out, I mean, his son of a fantastic, but he's a, taking too many risks, in my opinion. And I'd remember... Rather, Go on. Go on, I carry on, sorry. I was just going to say, I tweeted last week that he reminds me of Bruce Grobelar, Melvin. Yeah, I said that. No, he does. He he is. Yeah, He's absolutely yeah. brilliant, but absolutely yeah. mental at times. But Grobelar, I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, Albert, uh, first of all, I just want to say, can everyone say hello to my dad? He's in the chat room. Go on, Kels. Go on, Kelvin. Amanda, you always look awesome. Not that you're biased. The first 25 minutes our football was super. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. It's it was brilliant. sad, wasn't brilliant. it? Welcome to the chat room. Um, so, uh, Ramsdale, I sort of, I, I don't. I'm not as harsh as Melvin on him as that. I think he's. I think he. I think he brings more positive than negative. If I'm honest. No, I hear what you're saying. Um, no, I think. Melvin, that's a good point in the sense of there were some games towards the back end of last season, um, a little bit, and you saw that when we played Palace in the first game. Like, you've got a good defence in front of you. You've got, a, well, you've got a solid base of a defence in front of you. Um, you don't need to do things to 
add a bit more pressure to it. Uh, he's been, you know what I mean? He's been good since he's come here. Let's be fair to Aaron Ramsdale, but just try and iron out them moments where, the, you know, goalkeepers, it's, it's a massive concentration thing. You might not have nothing to do for 70, 80 minutes, but there's got to be them moments where you, where you, where you save us. But just, I'd like to see him iron that out a little bit, Amanda. You don't need, he's, he's, he's you bring in un- unnecessary pressure. Like that one, that moment, like he said in the second half, I don't know, like the guy didn't touch him. Like, that's, like come on, just be just be a little bit more quick and a bit more incisive. That's that's, that's the only thing I'd nitpick at him, to be honest. I, I know I agree. I, I'm not sitting here defending him. There are times where I go, oh, you know, like that. And I am doing that. I'm. It's not that I'm being, you know, rose tinted glasses. I can see it. A young goalkeeper. I think he's doing really well. There are moments, and absolutely today when he kicked that ball out, he had no excuse. But the other one, Melvin, he was complaining of being pushed. So. Um, we'll have to watch that later. Um, okay. Uh, apparently, I should stop. James is telling me, Amanda, stop calling Melvin Harsh. He's Double being J. realistic. <laughs> Double J. I do love him. Um, <laughs> Keith's telling me off. James, I'm going to get James on the show one day. Absolutely sure. So, let's start with Ben White. Both of you, good game? Uh, um... I can't, he's a fish out of water, right back. He's not a right back. He's done well. And I think he blocks a lot of, I mean, very few players get past him. But that's the first thing you've got to do as a back. But I think other things he bows on. Um, but I, and it's not his fault. He's not a right back. He's not a natural right back. And they, sometimes in a game, that makes the big difference. Those split second decisions, how you're feeling comfortable to make, to, to move correctly. But he's, but he, he does, he's okay. I, I got a bit worried when he flicked out somebody today when we were freeing him up. With our luck, we could have got a red card knowing our luck. Did you yeah, remember, I that remember that. Bit? Remember that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. That was a bit yeah. stupid. You know, we've got to get that right out of our game. There's no no reason for that at all. But I think, as I say, very few, you know, against Saha, uh, Saha the Palace, he was superb. Didn't, mm. didn't get past him once. And very few people can say that when they play Palace. But, but, He's going forward. He found a lot of space. But I thought the left-hand side of Bournemouth was weak. The amount of times that Saka had loads of space and we could do the overlap. Mm. There was no one coming to the left-back's defence. And he made he made a couple of good runs at Ben White. But I don't, I don't, for me, he's OK at right-back. He's a good player. Very good player. Nothing wrong with him at all. But I just feel, I feel his uncomfortableness at right-back. I, I just feel that. So, Carl Stark, thank you for joining the show, Carl. I think Saka is struggling with Ben White being right back. Do you sort of agree with that, you two? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so good, good, Carl, good point, mate. It's true because yeah. you're talking about combination play. Um, and Tommy and, and um, Saka, there was a very, very good understanding there. Same with, um, I think you're going to have a good understanding on the opposite side with Tierney. Zinchenko stroke Martinelli that, that it, it works it just it, it gels but Ben White there is not a natural right back it, it it doesn't as good as Saka is it just the, the it could figure out this season when Ben White plays there but naturally I would want to see Tommy Yasu there more of course oh I couldn't agree more I love Tommy Yasu yes. I love him I love him I love him okay um we've touched on Saliba we we all we we all agree <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic uh, player we've got there. Let's talk about Gabriel um, Albert. I think love he's him. getting better and better and stronger and stronger every game. Yeah, love him. You know what? You know what makes me laugh with the, um, the Gabriel thing. I think it's a. I think it's a trait in terms of where people talk about defenders. They go, "Oh, he gets, he gets too touch tight." I don't know too many defenders that don't do that. That's naturally his game. Like he's he's gonna get it right more times than he gets it wrong. Because if, if, as a centre back, if you think you can get it just before the striker, nine times out of ten he'll do it. Um, I love him. He's got better, Amanda. He was, I thought he was very good last season. Um, I thought he was decent in his first season, to be fair. Um, because then he's coming from a new league. But um, yeah, just impressed again. Impressed again. Imposing. And Amanda, one thing with him before I come to Melvin, he's a lot better on the ball than people think. Give him credit for. And you'll see it more because Zinchenko's there. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Melvin, anything to add to that? Yeah, just for all I want to add to that is I think that the back of his shirt, as you take off his name and put the word solid, because that's what he does. Every every performance is solid. And he's a solid performer. 
Yeah, he's yeah. He's solid, yeah. isn't he? He's okay. strong. He, and he's got the confidence to get when he gets tight because he can get that foot and get that toe yeah. in and make that decisive to, um, ball interception or whatever. Nah, just for me, Mr. Solid. And he's a goal threat as well. He's a goal yeah. threat as well. Yeah. <laughs> they all are at the moment. It's fantastic. Mm. Um, then we've got, like, obviously, a new boy Zinchenko and Tierney. Now, I'm going to just throw this out there. Tierney, Tierney, for me, much better at defending. Zinchenko, much better going forward than Tierney. <laughs> so, Melvin, your thoughts on Zinchenko and Tierney? Zinchenko, as a player, is magnificent. He's so, so good. He's one type. He's a type of football. When he gets the ball... He knows he's got three options. He's never caught on it. If something is blocked, and he'll just give it somewhere else without even looking. He knows where everybody is. He's strong. He doesn't mind getting forward. And for the life of him, we must not not play him. He's seeing his fit and he's playing very, very well. We've got to find a place for this guy that's starting 11 every week. If he has to move in the midfield, please do it. Because he's practically playing there anyway, the way we've been yeah. playing. You've got to play. He's so classy. It's unbelievable. He's, he's a revelation. You know, I thought he was good at City, but no, he's, he's gone up three or four notches since I've watched him play the Arsenal. He's so um, good. And he's making the other players play better as well. A bit like uh, Jesus. It's really interesting because one of my City mates don't rate him at all. They love him, really? but doesn't rate him. He said, you watch. You watch what happens. He'll give the ball away a lot in big games. Well, I said, well, I can't, I can't judge him. I can only judge him what I see. And at the moment, we're loving him. I love his energy. I love his... Uh, and again, another one. Uh, a big club that's won yeah. things. That's what we want. We, You know, we, we need that absolute attitude that he brings. Albert Zinchenko. No, I just kind of agree with both of you. I think one thing with me with Zinchenko, I think the good thing with him is he, when he was at City, obviously he played left back, but for the national, for his national team, he plays in he plays in a more advanced role. So you can see why he's comfortable on the ball. What I would say with him, there was an incident in the first half where he don't take liberties. You're a, you're a good footballer. Um, you're very good on the ball, but in certain areas of the pitch in the defensive third or your area, just don't take liberties. Because maybe that's what we, maybe what the Man City fans probably getting at you in terms of giving the ball away. But yeah, he's like I said, he's a good player. But sometimes to that fault, yeah, just be a little bit more, be a little bit more safe. Don't take liberties in certain areas of the pitch because you will get caught out. Okay, it's interesting. Okay, so we've had a chat about Xhaka. We're all very um, happy with how this is progressing. That's for sure. And I didn't think I'd be saying that. And I'm so pleased. Because he's such a lovely man. He comes across as such a lovely man. And he's had such a hard time with us. So to hear his song, I can't wait to sing it next week at the Emirates. Can't wait. Um, I was saying to Carl that I didn't really hear much about Thomas Party today. And that's not a criticism. It's not a criticism at all. It's actually a positive that we don't hear um, Party. You know what I'm saying about Alp? My man Alp? Yeah, you, I think... And I would, I would actually, in terms of today and party, and I would say probably Saka as well, you can be quietly effective. I like Saka that. got the ball a lot. People might think, oh, you know, you know, he didn't really get a goal, or he didn't really get into the fight. He, he got into decent positions. He was always available. I think party was, I think he was solid, the man. He was solid. He wasn't, I wouldn't say he, he there's been better games you'll see him play, but not, that's not to say he was poor. But uh, yeah, like I said, quietly effective he was today, I thought. Melv? I think he's got today. It's very similar to the other games he's played this season. But I think he's got some fabulous touches. You know, he moves his shoulders and I, I've pulled off the set. You know what I mean? He's so good. But other times, other times, Amanda, he messes up a five yard ball. He does yeah. his half in so well. Annoying. Isn't very it? Annoying. Yeah. yeah. But I love him playing for the Arsenal. He's a lovely, lovely. So we go to the forward line, and it's really interesting because we just got it's just so exciting. Martinelli, he's turning out. Well, we all know. I think I don't think anyone sat there in the last couple of seasons and thought we wouldn't have the most amazing player on our hands. But he is just growing and growing, isn't he, Melvin? He's got back his confidence. When he first came into the side, it was uh, he played in European football and league cup, whatever they call it. He was scoring goals, and he looked, oh, this young kid looked terrific. Then he had a couple of injuries, and it like he seemed to lose a bit of confidence. And who wouldn't? 
now has got all that confidence and more, is stronger, and playing with Jesus and also Zizenko on the same side as him, Zizenko, it's, it's really, it, it's helped him so much. And he comes inside a lot more now. He, he's just a fabulous, we know he's going to be a fabulous, fabulous player. If there's one criticism, when he goes down the left and roasts the right back, he'd take it that three yards too much before he crosses. Yeah, the yeah, right. I agree on that. But, yeah. but you know, that, that come out of this game, he'll learn. He'll learn, he's he'll learn. Fabulous, fabulous talent. And again, love watching him play the answer. There is something I just want to pick up on what Albert said, but I think Erdegaard is helping Martinelli. I think Erdegaard is helping everybody, if I'm honest, and I love Erdegaard in the team. But something you just said, Albert, that I've, I'm going to say it now because I'll forget. When you said Aubameyang and Lacazette with Jesus, it's so true. Yeah, it is so true. Lacazette is his peak. Aubameyang at his peak. Both of them is Jesus. I mean, I, I couldn't have put that any better. Sorry, I... I, I you know what, I'm like, I'll forget, but I really wanted to mention that point. Right, Martinelli, Erdegaard. I mean, we could, I mean, I mean, it's lovely when you've won. It's fantastic, mm. obviously, where there's going to be bumps in the road, as we all know. Um, but but what is this? And I wouldn't say love-hate with Erdegaard, because it isn't that extreme. But uh, there are sections of fans on social media that don't rate him, Albert. Why? Um, welcome to 21st century technology, isn't it? <laughs> social media. <laughs> right. But yeah, um, the Erdegaard one, it's like I kind of touched on it earlier. There's certain players that Arsenal fans, sections, keyword, um, just don't have Amanda. Um, and it's, I mean, if you don't rate a player, that's fine. Um, like, give me some tangible reasons why you think they're not beneficial to the team or why they don't bring anything to the team. Um, He's a technically gifted footballer. People say, you know, the thing is he's, he's, he's Ozil, but with more work rate, which I think is true. The thing is with Erdegaard, he does a lot of fantastic work off the ball. Um, someone, a talented footballer, someone like a Bernardo Silva in Man City, he's a, he's, a, he's a very, very gifted footballer. But if you actually look at what he does off the ball, it's immense. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. And, and that shouldn't be missed. Um, I mean... <laughs> I don't know what it is, Amanda. I think that's going to be the case, unfortunately, with um, people like Odegaard and Ben White. But listen, with the players that we've, we've got, hopefully in and around him, will bring out even the more best in him. But I want him, like I said, in terms of Odegaard, I, I want to personally see him get into the final third a bit more and have a few more shots, take a bit of a flat, uh, 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 you know, a, a ten off by your teammates. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens. Like, just take the ownership; it's fine. Like, but. I can't. We, we as us, us two, we can't speak for what some people's narratives and agendas are in regards to certain players. We're never gonna ever know the answer to that. But if he scores a winning goal and gets us three points away to Man City or Chelsea, then he'll soon forget that. Trust me. And it's interesting because, I, as I mentioned before, Barnaby is our, our only United um, fan in the chat room, and he said Erdegaard is the best player for that Arsenal team. So he's rated highly outside. Um, right. I, I, it's uh, who else? Saka. Well, I thought we played really well today. He was a little bit quiet at the Emirates last week. So what <laughs> makes no difference? As we said, maybe Ben White playing there has hindered him a little bit. Um, and then Jesus, we have not stopped raving about, have we? Just it's just the biggest smile. It is just. I think he's just going to become the fans' favourite very quickly, Melvin. Oh, well, he's there already, isn't he? He's one of the favourites <laughs> anyway. I mean, if you look at the team sheet in you know, a three weeks' time, and for whatever reason uh, he can't play, people would be so disappointed. Oh, my God, I would be. <laughs> more than any other player. They go, no, what's going on? What's happening? You know? But no, he's... Uh, from a guy to come, from a club that has been so successful to us, and just come and join us with a smile, it seems. I mean... He could think he was, you know, the, the, the dogs, couldn't he? Oh, I've come to this club that's not winning anything. I'm the big shot here. He hasn't given that at all. He's just no. he's knuckled down. He's part, he feels like he's part of the team when you see him with the rest of the players. He feels like he's, well, it helps with a lot of Brazilians there anyway. And that helps. And uh, it's just fantastic to hit the ground running so quickly. I mean, even when we bought Henri, Burkan, you can name them all. 
They never even pierced. They took so long to get going. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. Guy, <laughs> he's been, it's like he's been there five years already. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just going to read you. I'm just going to say hello to someone in Malaysia. It's 3.15. Wow. Wow. I'm absolutely honoured. Thank you so much, H Word Saga. I'm honoured. 315. Um, and yes, please hit the like button, everyone, please, so more people get to see. Um, and Carl Stark has sent me quite a few quotes from Arteta, and I'm gonna I'll, I won't read them all, but I'll I thank you for that, Carl, and I will pick some out. He said, Arteta still from, far from a perfect performance. We had some very strong periods and were very efficient in the opponent's half. Mm. But in the second half, we conceded too many chances for Bournemouth to put the ball into our box. I'm proud because it's not easy to come here and win 3-0, but there are still things to improve. We talked about starting really well and being precise in scoring the two goals, which we did within 11 minutes. Our test on being top of the table, no, it doesn't mean anything. What it means is the team is playing well. Really well, but it's about Monday and getting better at things. Um, Arteta jokes about Saliba's goal. He said, we've been training that all week. That's funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, this is interesting because there's a lot of people that don't like this chant, and I love it. Arteta on Saliba chant, the boys were singing it in the dressing room. And that's what I love. I love that the, I felt like I looked at all of them today and they all sort of connected. You know, it was all, I feel like we've got a real team. Um, like the team now. Yeah. Uh, right. So Arsenal boss Mikel on what Jesus brings to the side, a new confidence, a spark, that winning mentality, which is what I've been saying, the winning mentality. Um, Arsenal boss Arteta keeping his feet on the ground after being asked what it means to be top of the Premier League. It's just three games. What it means is that we've managed to win three games. Love that. I love that. Um Right, I think this is Ramsdale saying this. I, I don't know. I th he says, I think that we've got the Gabby, Jesus, from when he was young in Brazil. Oh, that was Aaron Ramsdale. And it's interesting, Ramsdale on his own performance. Um, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Good. Aaron Ramsdale says he will only grow from giving his age for a keeper, which is brilliant. Well said. And... This is this is something that I wanted to mention at the beginning, and it was very remiss of me. Arteta ends his press conference by dedicating today's win to Arsenal groundsman Steve Braddock, who died yesterday, and sends his best wishes to his family. He left a legacy here, Arteta says. Yes, we send condolences to all of Steve's yeah, family. Absolutely. Such a sad loss. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's been there many many years. Um, so that that's quite a lot of the uh, quotes. Um, Ramsdale. On, I'm going to um, end on this one. William Saliba's beautiful striker says, I don't know where Saliba has pulled that from. I've seen that as a clearance before. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Cole Stark, for typing that so quickly to me. Um, it, it's lovely. It is, it is um, wonderful to have three in three. Um, oh. It's a wonderful start. And my famous tagline last year was halfway through the season, we'd give anything to be fifth, anything after our start. Now, now I would be very and ultra disappointed if we're not in the top four. Uh, absolutely. And we, we, if we continue like this, continue, we should be. Now, very interesting. A lot of my non-Arsenal friends, not Tottenham, think Tottenham are the biggest rival to City. And I sat there and I went, hello? Why? Anyone looking at us? Why not? Why can't we challenge for it? This is what we've been waiting for, to challenge for the league, not top four. Not to get in the fourth place, to challenge for the league. Not getting above myself. I know the games we played. I'm not an idiot. I know we've got City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, all of them to come. But Melvin, oh. do you think... Go on. Aren't we showing a little bit of disrespect to Liverpool for that statement? I said that. I said that to him. I said, do you not think yeah, Liverpool yeah. can have a say in this? I mean, come on, they're terrific. Yeah. I mean, if we can be as good as Liverpool this season, I'll be, I'll be so happy. <laughs> they're Man City, in my opinion. Mm. Albert, do you, think, do you think... I mean, look, I, I watched the Tottenham game beforehand... Pretty boring, lucky. Harry Kane scores, pretty typical. If they didn't have Harry Kane, 
they even took Son off. Um, I, I, I do think, and I also think they were very lucky at Chelsea with that VAR decision. Absolutely disgraceful. The man pulls his hair. It's not even an opinion. It's not even someone that can say, is it a penalty or not? He yanks his hair. If that was Xhaka, I keep saying, I, I just don't know how Tottenham keep getting away with it. Anyway, don't want to talk about them. Um, do you think that we have a chance of challenging for top spot? Yeah, top four or... Um... No, top spot. No. Or is it too soon? Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, definitely too soon. Um, I think the... The back end of last season, the way that bit us, that, yeah, that, that, was, that was a hard one to take, man. Um, you need a bit more experience there. We've got that. We've got that. We have got it. Um, that's a big transition from, you know, from fifth to, it's not impossible, but um, yeah, I, 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 that's a bit too steep for me personally. Okay, so I'm going to ask you now, three games in, this time last year, we'd lost three games, but we did have City, um, Chelsea. Obviously, we lost at Brentford. And if you look at the United fan, this is what we were saying. He'd give anything to be fifth. They were our words this time last year. We weren't even talking about fifth. I was worrying about being relegated, let alone fifth, where our next win was going to come from. So I'm going to ask you now, game three in, where do you think we're going to end up? Um, what did I say at the start of the season? I think I said we'd get fifth. I think that's what I said. I think you I said feel that. that we'd get fifth? No progress from that. last season? I think I said that. Okay. Well, Albert, I'm going to write this down because you know I'm not going to remember this next week, let alone the end of the season. Yeah. I, 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 I think I said fifth. I think I said fifth. But I think, I, I think, Arsenal did, I think this season, if someone asked me the question, oh, do you think um, we'll get top four? I said um, it'd be tight. I think it'd be tight. It could be a lot tighter than people think. Um. People in the chat room, tell me where you think you're going to end up and I'll put it up. Melvin? Fourth. I'm not normally as positive. I think we're finished fourth. We've got either Chelsea or Tottenham to be one of those two. We're in it because United are out of the picture. Let's face it. If it's we Chelsea keep everyone fit. Yes, I know it's it's the three of us, isn't it? I'd, I'd yeah, sort it's of two out of three. It's two okay. Out of three. So I'm going third, okay? I think really? Melvin's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I, Melvin's... Listen... It's doable with that squad. And and remember, the transfer window's not over yet. We've got two weeks left, is it? No, 10 yeah. days left. I think Trust someone's me. coming in that we're going to be shocked at. So let me see what people... Oh, Jed agrees with me, third. We've got fourth here from Malaysia. Are you I awake? Think, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Melvin's kind of smart. I think we could sneak it above Tottenham. I think, personally. Well, we'll see. It's a long season. I'm yeah. being positive. I'm not being like rose-tinted glasses. I just think this team is special. Right. First of all, boys, thank you so much. It's always lovely to do a post-game show when you've won, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. We've it's, done nearly an hour and we could carry on talking for so long. <laughs> We've got, okay, so what's coming up next week? We've got Fulham. Next Saturday night mm -hmm. um, at the Emirates, 5.30. That'll be rocking, that stadium. Um, I'm assuming you'll both be there with me as well. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. I have to double check. I have to double check. Oh, I hope you get there, Albert. Um, also, so as you know, I'm part of the same old Arsenal channel. Um, Craig has resurrected the podcast. Same old Arsenal. And most Sunday nights, um, the boys record and sometimes I join as well. Um, go and listen because it's been brilliant, actually. Really good. It's not live. It's just an audio. You can pick it up on any, any platform. But he's also done a Patreon account. I don't really know much about it, so bear with me. It's called Buy, Buy Craig a Pint. Um, it's £4 a month for the same old Arsenal channel just to buy him a pint. He does a lot of work for me. He, he's brilliant. So if you would like to join the Patreon channel, you'll, you'll still see everything anyway, but um, it's called Buy Craig a Pint. Bless him. Um, yeah, we've got Fulham next week. I am not sure when my show is next week. Just please look out. Please subscribe. Please press like. Follow. Right, where can we find you on Twitter, uh, Melvin? It says there, Melvin, anyway, is Arsenal Marks. And have you doing any podcasts this week? I'll be on one. I've got my own. I'm on over and over again with Richard. I host a show now on Wednesday. 
called Hybrid Matters. Oh, where can people hybrid, find that? Yeah, on over and over again on a Wednesday, eight o'clock kickoff. And uh, I'd love, obviously, at some stage, we're, we're doing the 60s, early 60s now. When we come up to a bit later, because you two are so <laughs> young, I'd love to invite you both on. <laughs> my dad, you need to get my dad on for the 60s. Yeah, if you'd like. I've seen you before on your channel. Yeah, yeah, my dad's coming back. My dad's coming yeah, back. I we WhatsApp during the game and it's hilarious what comes out. <laughs> His messages, bless him. Um, right, so they can find you, Melvin. Albert, what are you doing this week with your pod? Oh, uh, there might be a weekly surgery show coming up this week. I have to double check the the, 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 the busy calendar around that outside work. But... I know. But anyway, thanks for the plug. Yes, Albert JTV people. Uh, they've got my own channel and Twitter handle at AUM57. And come and check out subscribe, people. Thanks, Amanda. Trust me, peeps. Subscribe to Albert. He's fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to come back on your show. I'll come on all your show. I love co I love being a guest. I much prefer being a guest than a host. I'm a better guest than I am a host. <laughs> um, right. That's so sweet. Show is great. Thanks for doing it. Listen, I love the fact that I can interact with gooners all around the world. That's what it's all about. This is your show just as much as ours. I want to say a big thank you to Albert and Melvin coming on my first post-game show. It's always Oops. Arsenal. We're nine points. We're top of the league. Enjoy your Saturday evening, <laughs> gooners, because I'll enjoy mine. Good night, everyone. Always Good. Arsenal. Thanks a lot.